Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, please I'm don't sorry. say that. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I was like, what? Did I, I didn't give you a command. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, did you grow up in the South? Yes, yes. That's where it comes from. Okay. I know. I'm going to beat my ass if they knew I didn't oh, say yes, shit. I should have said Alexis. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, hell yeah. Well, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is so exciting. Yeah, you look good. You got your track and field hoodie on. <laughs> Yeah, got the space buns or the fun buns, as everybody wants to call it. What is it? Like the fun buns. Oh, yeah, yeah. They look <laughs> awesome. You look good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, one of your pictures, actually, you used it as your uh, profile on um, Discord as well. The one with the, yes. you have your hair the same way. Yes. You're sitting there holding a pistol. Yes. It, it's cool. Thank you. Well, when uh when this video goes up do you want me to use that one for the uh youtube thumbnail yeah that'd be okay. perfect i so think that's gonna I... that's gonna be kind of like my forte you know yeah. just so the boys will know that i'm a girl yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're a girl and you're ready to go you got your pistol but you're you're sitting there kind of like you know what i just fucked some people up i'm done and you yeah. know <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Because what I normally wear is I just wear a hat, and boys just don't understand that I'm a girl. Because obviously, like, you have a face mask on and everything. Right. And I don't know. Are you on TikTok at all? I, I, I'm not. I don't use it, but I've I've watched a ton of videos from it because okay. people keep sending me stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just had a video go viral because. I had clipped something on my GoPro and this kid just walks up to me and he's like, Hey bae. And I'm, I'm, you hear me say sup. And like, it was really odd to me because I was like, what? And so like I clipped it and I posted it on TikTok and people are just hating on me. They're just like, he doesn't know you're a girl. And then like, it's just like, that wasn't even funny, blah, blah, blah. So oh it's just God. like, and they're just like, I didn't know you were a girl. And it's like, okay, I have woman features. So how are right. you walking up to me thinking that I'm a little boy? So <laughs> it, I get a lot of hate on shit like that, you know, but. Well, most of the ladies I've talked to on here, they, uh, and this is across the board, like no matter what country they're in, they go out playing and then uh, just like that, nobody knows they're a girl until mm -hmm. they call their hit. And they're like, you know, they hit. And then the guy that shoots him is like, oh, I didn't know you were a girl. And they're like, okay, <laughs> like, and? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I was out at um, Power Ops with my husband. And I, it's like an outdoor field. And I'm standing there next to him. And this kid is, like, talking to my husband. He's like, that little dude right there. And my husband's like, who are you talking about? And he's like, that little dude right there. And he's like, that's a girl. And he's like, <laughs> what? And he's like that is a girl and he's like oh i'm so sorry so oh it, my God. It, a lot of people just don't understand that there's actually girls out there right well it's it's not common even i mean it's getting more common but especially for the last 10 years it has not been common mm -hmm. you know even in yeah. when i played paintball it was there was hardly any girls out there once in a while a guy would you know the girlfriend would come along or something but most of the time it was just us guys so uh you know it's very rare uh, or it used to be. So it's starting to get more. Yes. Popular, and especially like when you sit in the tent, especially like at my home field, I get a lot of stares, a lot of stares because most of the time you only see like rental girls come in. Yeah. And so when you see people or girls coming in with like the tricked out mask, like the high cap was and like speed stuff shit, they're just like, Oh shit. Like, <laughs> Oh, that, that's probably just your husband's or that's just like your boyfriend's or whatever. I'm right. like, Mom, bro, this is my shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, I run with this all the time. Yeah, that's, uh, it, it is getting more common. You know, one of my first uh, couple of podcasts with um, 
well, my first lady podcast or, you know, lady guest on the podcast was uh, just like two months ago. And then since then, I've had a, a lot, uh, you know, compared to the podcast I did before. So uh, they're all the same way. They're like, you know, they have once they go, they didn't want to go at first. A lot of them didn't want to go. Most of them. And then uh, they'll go with their boyfriend or brother or husband or whatever. And then once they go that first time, man, they're like a thousand percent in and they got all the fucking gear, all the shit. And uh, like they're like aggressive players. You know, it's it's really funny because, uh, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't think that somebody that didn't really want to go in the first place that then goes and then, you know, turns out loving it like that much. And this is not like a a rare thing. This is like every single person I've talked to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My husband was like, I was just having like a really bad like week at work and he was like, please just come play with me. And I was like, you know what? Okay. Okay. So obviously like I felt like a, a badass cause I got like the chest rig on. I'm like, okay, let's go. Like, let's yeah, go. Good. And so I'm in the tent and I'm like, okay, I'm a little nervous now. Like I don't want to do this anymore. Like it's okay. <laughs> and so I go out there and I'm just like, Okay, this is nice. And then, like a couple weeks later, he was like, "I'm gonna build myself a high cap." I was like, "Okay, don't know what that means, but okay." And so one round, he was like, "Play with it," and I was like, "Okay." And I was like, "I'm gonna need me one of those." Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just like it's just been like rolling ever since. And like now, it's like my style has changed because I look more like a Milsom player, I guess. And then yeah. now my style has changed more to more like speed soft. And it's funny because, like, some of, like, the team friends, they'll just be like, you look so different. Like, it's so weird to see, like, your transformation from, like, more of, like, the mill to, like, the speed soft. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's fun, well, though. So you have, you have gear for both then? Kind of, yeah, I guess. Because, I mean, I started out with, like, the full, like, um, chest piece, I guess. Like, the vest. And then um, I just got the BQB chest rig and then a tap pack. So uh, transitioning to that, but I was wearing like cargo pants and oh, yeah. that sort of thing. And so you get that milsom like feel, but then now I have all the speed soft stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... Most people I've talked to, they get, uh, they start getting all that gear. It's for like mill sim, you know, outdoor play, you know, woodland mm -hmm. kind of stuff or whatever. And then, uh, but there's a handful that I've talked to that are, have started playing speed soft or have been playing speed soft. You know, I talked with, uh, uh, little miss airsoft, you know, Jess. Yes. Yes. And Love I her. saw on your Instagram that you, ha uh, you get, you, you guys have a picture together on your Instagram. Yes. Yes. At I th I want to say it was SS Airsoft. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So yeah, she uh, she played well slow QB. She said because yeah. <laughs> she started the patch with the slow QB thing. But uh, but yeah, there's a there's a handful of people I talked to that are in the speed QB. I want to talk to more people mm -hmm. that are in the speed QB because yeah. uh, it's a whole different. I think it's more relatable to what I played with um you know with paintball because there yeah. wasn't a lot of there were in fact there was no milsim events that i knew of in paintball back in the you know mid 90s so it was uh it was all fast paced you know shorter fields yeah the, yeah the games we set up on our own you know just my buddy's uh property or whatever that was woodland play you know capture the flag bigger you know through the woods and all that kind of stuff but uh all the other stuff that we went to an actual field it was all fast paid i mean i loved it you know yeah. it was cool yeah i mean it's a lot of fun because i mean obviously like when my husband first like introduced me it was just like in like the open play fields and i mean we our home field is ss so okay. like you know just kind of like running around just doing whatever and then we went to power ops which is the outdoor field and you do kind of get like more of like the milsom field um because you are outside um, but then one day he was like, hey, um, my team for Speed QB needs a fill-in, and you're technically the team mom. They're like, you've never played before, but do you want to come and fill in? And I was like, 
oh, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Because, I mean, when you watch it, it's very intimidating because it's just like BBs are flying, like yeah. very fast paced. People are getting out. They're screaming. They're yelling, like just a lot going on at once. So right. me being a baby airsoft player, it's just like, I don't know about that. And so, like, as soon as I got in there, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, what is going on? And so I remember I just freaked out because – I thought like the game was over yeah. and uh, I like look around and I see all my teammate in the day box and I was like, why aren't like, why aren't we like stopping? <laughs> and then I realized that the game is still going. Oh shit. And so I like look around and I'm like, oh, uh, this is my first game I've ever played and I'm the last one in. And I remember I just locked eyes with my husband in the dead box and he just looks at me like, don't you dare call yourself out. And I was like, okay, okay. And so, like, I knew somebody was back right, and I was like, okay, I know he's back there. I'm going to get him out. And then I didn't realize that there was another person back left. And so he ended up rushing me. But, you know, I have been hooked ever since, like, BQB fully. That is where my heart's at. Yeah. But were, you, uh, were you mostly a, like, competitive kind of person growing up anyway? Before you got into airsoft? Um, yeah, I would say so. I mean, I ran track and field and then cross country, and then I played lacrosse, so more of a little bit, like, aggressive. And I like that it's, like, a game, kind yeah. of. Like, you know, like, get that capture the flag shit going on. Right. Yeah, yeah but, like, cool. all the boys are like, you're so small. You're able to get down there. You're able to do this. And so... Um, I don't know if you've seen on like my page or like with um, Little Miss, but we just started that all girls airsoft team. Mm -hmm. So the uh, um, FTW, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. So if anybody's listening, go give us a follow. Give us yeah, a little definitely. shout out. I'll, I'll put that uh, link in the um, in yes. everything that I post or whatever, because yes. that is something that when I started talking with all these ladies in the UK and all that, they started one a group over there as well called the UCAL. You know, you, okay. uh, UK airsoft ladies, and that was a big. They're having a big event uh, in like a month and a half, so yeah. they're trying to get at least fifty women for that event to create their own team, so they can go girls against guys. Yes, so, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So we're we have some stuff going on there, so I think we're gonna kind of focus more towards speed right now. Um, so we have some stuff up our sleeve, but we've done some practices here and there and my husband's like all right go try x i'm like mostly a back player i don't know what you mean go try x and <laughs> i mean golly i have so much respect for people that play x and up front because i remember like my whole body was just like obliterated afterwards like knees were scuffed up and i remember telling the girls i was like do not turn your gopros on for the first slide that i'm about to do <laughs> and i told little missus that i went to go slide and i think my knee pads caught wrong and so i like skidded across the floor my mask comes flying off my husband's trying to pick me up like trying to get my mask back on because like with the field stuff they're just like all right, you can be out there, but you all have to have your mask on at all times. Right. And so he, I'm like trying to get up and he's just trying to get my mask back on and trying to help me. And I'm just like, I'm just glad that he got that on like camera because that would be so embarrassing. But I am excited because I want the girls to come out and like just beat ass out there and just shit on these boys and just <laughs> take over the airsoft community. Well, now, come on. I, who knows about that? We'll see. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to be positive about it. You know, I know, like, I know at first we're going to get shit on. We're, you know, because people are going to run in and they're going to think, I, I don't want to get beat by a girl. I don't want to get beat by the girl's team, you know? So they're going to underestimate know, us a little bit. But I, I don't, I don't know. I have, I have my uh, opinion on that. I think. The big, like a first big event that happens like in the, you know, in the UK with what they're doing or whatever you get, you know, girls are doing. 
I have a feeling there's a lot of guys who are going to be like, yeah, let's let them beat us because we want to talk to girls. <laughs> so, oh, <God>. you know, <laughs> no, you know, I mean, you know how it is. It's just, uh, yeah. I, and I'm not saying they're going to let them beat, you know, or let you guys beat them. But, uh, yeah, uh, that would be yeah. funny, though. You know, I don't know. The, uh, some of these boys got some pride issues in the airsoft world and you can probably see with it and again with the whole tiktok thing i get a crap ton of hate on there um so, so yeah i get a lot of hate on there so i have to look i have to look and see what uh what videos you're talking about because like i said i i have a tiktok yeah. account somewhere that i did years ago when my kids were like oh watch this and oh watch this or whatever <laughs> and uh <laughs> so yeah I, you know we have parties in our my uh you know our family comes over so like my daughter just got married in october her okay. husband so her sister-in-laws uh which so her husband has three younger sisters so the two of them are teenagers so when they mm -hmm. come over you know, we say hi and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm walking around drinking and all of a sudden they'll just break out into this weird ass fucking dance thing or whatever, like pull, pulling their shorts way up and like doing all this in their shirt up and stuff. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, shut up. You're ruining my TikTok video. I'm like, oh my God, go in the back room or so. Get out of here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, so on my regular account, like, I just, like, post random stuff on there. But then I was like, would it be weird to post, like, airsoft stuff? And, like, I tried to post it on, like, my regular account. And I have over 20,000 followers on my regular account. And nice. it just did not take well because, like, with TikTok, it's weird. You have to have, like, your certain, like, niche, I guess. Or oh, okay. whatever. However you say it. Right. Um, But it just wasn't like the vibes that my followers wanted and yeah. so i was like you know what? i'm just gonna create a whole different account so i created um, my spooky account and i mean within a week i had over a thousand followers Damn. so i mean it's just they want to see my gear they want to see my commentary that i do with my gopro because i didn't realize how much i was actually talking on the field oh yeah so I think I actually posted it on my Instagram, like with my reels. But every any time I would hit somebody, I would hear, "Got him, got him, got him." And so I didn't realize that I was doing it until I was going back and looking at my clips. And so right. it's like they want to hear all my commentary that I say because I dropped the f bomb quite a bit. Yeah. Um, on accident, I, it just brings it out of me, airs off <laughs> because I cuss little kids out on that. You're terrible. <laughs> I know. I know. Like they don't hear that in cool nowadays apparently what? but <laughs> no come on now they hear the f word a little bit more mm -hmm. than they probably should um but yeah i mean tiktok and the little boys on there just i mean i think one of them i've had two pickup lines for airsoft on there one asked me if they could stick their mag in my mag well i think <laughs> nice and then somebody told me that they were going to report me to the ref for not calling my hits because he, like, shot me in my DMs or something like that. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. Like, <laughs> hey, you know, creative, whatever. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, you, okay, you're, you're working it. You're at least trying, but... Oh, that's funny. I mean, I get mixed feelings of either people hitting on me, people telling me I'm garbage, or that my content isn't funny, or they think that my content's stupid, and I'm like, you know what, you're still following me and giving me a like and giving right. me a comment, so either way, you're helping me out. Right. Yeah, I saw a post, you know, recently somewhere that said, uh, love your haters, because like when you have a social media account or something, love your haters, because they're the ones that are going to... They're going to talk about you all the time. They're going to talk the most about you. It might be negative, yeah. but they're going to give you the most, you know, press that you, <laughs> you exactly. need for your channel. <laughs> so, exactly. Oh, yeah. And, like, people were getting upset because, I mean, like, I would take some of their comments and I would reply with a video. Hmm. And there was, like, one where it was, like, I'll be damned if I listen to a man with an unwashed ass or something like that. What the and fuck is that? It's like it's like a TikTok sound, oh. but people were getting mad that I was like 
responding to them. Yeah. So like, I think I was getting a little bit more hate because they were seeing that I was actually responding to these videos. And I was just like, I mean, if y'all are just going to keep on hating on me, like, whatever. Like you said, you're giving me more publicity. And as soon as I walk into, like, an airsoft place, if they realize, hey, that's spooky, you know what? Hey, or if they say some shit to me, they realize I'm going to clip it and then put it on my TikTok account. So Yeah. I wish... Hey. So we, we've had a YouTube channel for three years and, uh, you know, for Airsoft. And it's, we hardly ever get, like, hate messages. I, I want some. I want, because I'm the kind of person I like to, like, critique myself anyway. Like, I want to get better at whatever I'm doing. So, and, and we don't get negative comments. I'm like, what the hell? Where's all the people that are like, you know, come on. And I, I always wonder if it's because we started doing giveaways, like, almost monthly, pretty much every yeah. month. Uh, very early in our channel so i wonder if it's like they don't want to be cut out or i don't know but like hmm. i'm like i want the pause or not the i want the honest you know yeah. responses so i yeah. had one guy in the last like two months it's an older video that we did on this uh, rpg and he said all he put was this is gay and uh, i was like yes we finally got a negative comment i love it <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah yeah and i mean people like my husband will hop on there and kind of like start going after them too because i mean i obviously like everybody just wants to fuck around with a girl right. and i mean I will be the first one to defend people that are in the military. That's like my biggest thing. Dad was is in the military right now. Husband was in the Marines. So it's just like whatever. Uh -huh. And you know like the stigma around like the different military branches. And so somebody commented and just had major hate on me. And so like I went to their account, saw that they were in the army, and I said, That's oh, the Jesus. one who's in the army. Yeah. And because me with a Marine husband, you know, I know right. like, big boys over there. And so um, these little kids are like, why are you getting on to somebody who's defending our country? And I was like, oh, get out of here. Get like, bro, here. you don't even know. Because you're, like, if you're married to a Marine, you're considered, you know, my wife, I was in a Marine Corps. So okay. my wife and I got married when I was still, I still had two years left. So, uh, so she was part of that you know that group so if somebody else from a different branch talks shit about marines she's like fuck you you know <laughs> exactly exactly oh, yeah. i mean like my dad's in the air force and obviously you you know like the chair force and everything right but my like, daughter was as well yeah yeah so it's like i have mad respect for people in the military but it's like as soon as i mean not to hate but like navy or army i will bust your ass about that yeah shit. dude like if you're going to comment on my shit, I'm going to comment on your shit. If they're coming at you first, like, bro, and then you look and see they're in those one of those <laughs> branches, if they're not, like, special forces, you know, like a step above, like, regular Marines, then you can fuck off. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, homeboy, you are using your phone in boot camp, and, oh, like, Jesus. you're trying to use it for clout on TikTok. Like, I don't have sympathy for you. No. No. Uh -uh. No, that ain't that ain't going. So yeah. you guys, uh, so when when was uh, your husband in the Marines? He's out now. Uh, yes, he's okay. out. Um, he was in from twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen until twenty twenty one. Yeah. So he did his full four years. Yeah, that's what I did. I did four and got out. We were uh, when it came time to re up. Uh, we were talking about having kids. We want to have kids young. Yeah. So uh, we would be young when they were older. Well, honestly, we didn't really think about that at the time. Like, you know, it's – especially when you're first married. Like, the first couple of years you're married, you're just, like, having fun. You're going, doing all these things, whatever. And then uh, we didn't really have a, a long-term plan for mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It was uh, – we were influenced by uh, this family we went to church with that had, like, seven kids. So – they had seven and they were older. They had seven kids. They were like my parents' age at that time. So they had seven kids. One of their kids had five kids. One of their other kids had six kids. One, they had like 30 grandkids and they were still fairly young, like, you know, 60 ish. And they were, you know, active and doing all this shit. And this is out in California. I was stationed at Pendleton, my last yeah. duty station. So that was our influence really early in our, well, right away in our, uh, when we were first married. So, uh, 
we were like, man, this is fucking cool. Like, I, we would like to have this kind of set up. We didn't realize yeah. how much work it would be to have five kids in seven oh. years and have all these toddlers and babies, at, you know, at once uh, for like, you know, 17 years until they can start taking care of themselves. <laughs> well, not quite 17 years, you know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, that, that was kind of our, you know, thing in the beginning with, yeah. the, uh, you know, doing that. But we, uh, I got out because we wanted to start a family, you know, instead yeah. of, yeah. you know, re-upping or whatever. So. Yeah, my husband ended up getting out because his MOS was um, tank mechanic. Mm. So they ended up taking the tanks away from the Marines. So he was like, ah, I don't want to do anything else here. No you shit. Know, they took the tanks away, so I'm just oh, going to kind of get out. Yeah, the tanks uh, went to the Army. So. <laughs> okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, but, listen, I mean, when I was in, we had, we actually got hand me down vehicles from the army. We would get okay. them to the motor pool and the Humvees, these LVSs and uh, five tons, whatever. They would have army and all the serial number and shit stenciled on the side. We had to paint over it and it was all broken down, used shit that had to get refixed. And then we used it as our new shit. Yeah. And I was like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah, army like shit exactly exactly and i think like within like the first couple months they were like doing training with like the army and the tanks and like one of them shot the other tank and it's like we maybe we should have left the tanks with the marines <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <sighs> we always have those you know inner military jokes that we all you know whenever i yeah. tell somebody i was in the marines I'm like, yeah, you know, I was on a ship, you know, a couple times, you know, on in the Navy because that's our sister company. And they look at me like they don't get it, you know, <laughs> you know, our exactly. sister company, you know, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, because we're a yeah. branch of the Navy, obviously, you know that. But uh, yeah. So how did you guys meet? Uh, we actually met in high school. So we were high school sweethearts, um, met in Spanish class, but you know, he left to go to the Marines my senior year of high school. So we did, obviously, like the four years of long distance. And then we decided to get married in 2020, have the big white wedding. But with COVID, ended up pushing back our wedding, but still got married in a jailhouse yeah. in uh, Camp Lejeune. <laughs> nice. so, you know, everybody's trying to get married at one time because, you know, the military stigma of that. Got to get right. the benefits yeah. but i mean we've been together ever since and alive and well playing airsoft together trying to take the airsoft community right that's cool yeah my wife and i met in high school as well okay <clears throat> and uh our first date was actually graduation day from high school so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we we met in you know one of the classes we had math class or some shit and uh but yeah and so we've been together since. Oh, it's not been easy. It's been 30 years that we've been married. But uh, it's not been a, a smooth, <laughs> you know, no relationship is like perfectly smooth. You know how it is. But uh, but we're still here. And uh, our five kids are grown. They're in their 20s. And um, two of them started Airsoft three years ago. That's how we started our channel. Okay. okay. So when they were older, you know. But uh, yeah, so similar story yeah as you guys i guess yeah i mean i definitely think it's kind of funny because i mean you go to airsoft to kind of just like level out kind of just like de-stress but it's so funny because like you'll my husband's name is nick um and so you'll probably you'll probably hear on my um gopro footage that we kind of argue back and forth on the field yeah um because i'm more like i would like to sit in like sniper people um because i'm small enough if i can sit and hide out but just recently i'm like okay like we're gonna go run 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 like try to take people on um but he, he'll be like come follow me come follow me and just recently um he was like come follow me come follow me so i follow him and i get shot so i call myself out and like i try to get back up there to him well we end up like the game was over and we walk out and he's like 
doing? Like, why weren't you behind me? I was like, I got shot. And he was like, Alexis, come on. I was like, I got shot. I had to walk back. And so, like, you see, like, it's, like, weird having, like, a husband and wife, like, dynamic there because it's, like, yeah. we're just kind of, like, bickering back and forth. And, like, people are around us, like, I don't know what to do. Like, the boys <laughs> yeah. are like, oh, we're going to go stand over here for a second. Let y'all figure this out. Yeah. But it, I mean, it, it's kind of like couples counseling, you know? It, right. I mean, you just want to you know, them one time, you know? <laughs> well, but. this uh, <clears throat> this girl I talked to last week in uh, Austria, she said, I asked her how she got an airsoft. She said um, the her ex-boyfriend was in the military and told her, hey, you need to come play with me. And she was like, no, no. He said, no, no, no. You need to. You have anger issues, and you this will help you. No shit. So she she starts laughing, and she said, "So I went, and it helped." <laughs> so yeah. and it, it's like a therapy, you know. So uh, exactly. yeah, it's funny. Oh yeah. Exactly. I mean, again, like I said, I'm not one to be like super aggressive or cuss anybody out, but it's like as soon as I am on that airsoft field, if one little kid pisses me off, like. Obviously, I'm not going to yell at, like, the rentals, you know, whatever. But, like, the those little kids that are walking around with, like, the $1,000 guns that, like, you know, mommy and daddy pay for, like, I'll go up to them and yell at them if they're not doing something they're supposed to be doing. Like, there was one kid, he shot me in the ankle, like, while we were, like, briefing. And I looked at him, and I was like, shoot me in the fucking ankle again, dude. And he just kind of <laughs> looked at me, and I was just like, if you don't know how to work your gun step off the field but you're gonna right. fucking shoot me in the ankles like it is just, ooh, okay so. like don't have your finger on the how about trigger safety you know or exactly. trigger discipline you know like don't have your tr trigger or finger on trigger when you're not on the field ready to shoot exactly and me and my husband kind of just like giggle at each other because uh we went to a place up in chattanooga and this little kid just had like the spring loader um or like the spring load airsoft gun, and he is walking around with his finger on the trigger, looking at people, and it was just like, oh, I'm Jesus. like, you're, you're, we are briefing, and he ended up shooting my husband like three times while we were briefing, and he's like, oh. give me the gun, like, just give me the gun, like, yeah. get away from me, like, get away, no, and he's like, I'm so sorry, and Nick's like, no, we're going to learn gun safety here for a second. Get your finger off the trigger. Like, it's not that hard. But, uh, I mean, just these little kids and their guns, they need safety briefings, like, out the wazoo. Yeah, a lot of them uh, start out now, especially now. I feel like uh, they don't have, they don't grow up with dads that teach them this kind of stuff because I feel like, well, maybe in the, still in the South. You know, we're in South Carolina. Okay. So still a lot of people growing up around guns, you know, hunting and, and shit like that. But uh, there's a, lot, a big majority of people throughout the country that uh, are growing up, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old that don't have a dad that's either involved or maybe their parents are against guns, you know. So, and, and that's any gun. Like, no, exactly. it's even a toy gun, you know, like. Bro, teach your kid. I don't care if you're against guns or not. And I've said this on another podcast before. The way I felt, and obviously I was in the military, so uh, you know, coming out, uh, I I felt like that was important to know. Not mm -hmm. because, hey, I want my kids to go shoot everything, you know. It's because I treated it the same way as a car. So when they get to be older and they drive a car, it's dangerous. You should know what the fuck you're doing. Uh, if you were, you know, the statistics that a child is going to be around a gun, like at their friend's house or somewhere else is really high. If they don't mm -hmm. know, if they don't know, and their friend doesn't know how to handle that thing, some bad shit can happen. So I feel like it's their duty as a parent to, <laughs> to do that. Even if you're yeah. against guns, like yeah. never have them, whatever, at least get something like an airsoft gun or whatever and teach them all the basics and and get rid of it or whatever but at least teach them all that kind of shit in the beginning so they yeah. carry on with it you know yeah exactly i mean it's just like get your damn finger off that trigger boy like you're literally <laughs> sitting in the dead box like oh yeah no 
Or like even in like the dead zone, you just you're getting your guns ready and like you hear people shoot and it's just like one, none of us have our eye protection on too. Like what the mm -hmm. fuck are you doing? Like put that shit down. For real. Now you guys were at uh did you and your husband both go to uh SS Airsoft for the uh, twelve year anniversary? Yes. Yes. That that looked awesome. That was the weekend that we had Stonebreaker, uh, Op Stonebreaker here at GTI in South Carolina. That was my very okay. first mil sim, and I went uh, with a press pass. But uh, I wanted when I saw those posts from SS Airsoft, you know, announcing it, you know, leading up to it. Yeah. I started looking it up. I was like, dude, I want to go there because we're in Simpsonville, South Carolina. So we're about. Uh, it's only an hour and a half from us to Atlanta. So okay. I'm not sure how far SS Air, uh, SS, well, SS Airsoft is not that far from us. It's only like two hours, okay. but it's like, if you look at the map from where GTI was, it is, uh, it's five hours from GTI. So I was, t I was telling the guys, I was like, Hey, when I first saw this, I said, like, Hey, we should go down there for Friday night hang out because mm -hmm. I saw like all these different people were going to be at uh, the 12 year anniversary. All these people I follow on YouTube and Instagram, whatever. And uh, I was like, man, that'd be badass. I want to film all this stuff, get a bunch of pictures and meet all these people. So I looked at the map and I did one of those trip things. So it was uh, two hours to SS and then five and a half or whatever to GTI. Oh. And I was like, bro, we won't get there till like <laughs> two in the morning or three in the morning. No. So, and these guys were playing, you know, Saturday morning early. So anyway, yeah. uh, so how was that? What did you guys meet a bunch of people that, um, you know, that were on YouTube and all these other guys that were there? Yeah. 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 Um, so I will say before, like we started like the FTW stuff. Um, I remember looking at little Mrs. Airsoft, um, page and I was like, damn like she has a lot of followers like she seems really cool and it's kind of intimidating when you see like these bigger names right. and i remember just talking to her and we were so excited um to meet her and so we got like we went out there and literally so down to earth like so sweet so it was like kind of like oh you're actually we met yeah. like a big name and then um road customs he was there too um, literally like the sweetest guy we've ever met. Um, he did like custom mask for, um, SS and like kind of brought like the custom mask, like feel down there. Oh. Um, and he has done like, like, um, like the venom style oh, where it's like, yeah, the, yeah. like the teeth and everything. Mm. Um, and so he, I just remember, well, first Nick and I were sitting in our living room and Nick goes, did you see what SS just posted? And I was like, no. And he was like, they have three custom masks from Rogue Customs. And he was like, I want one. And I was just like, okay, well, we'll go get it. Within like the first a couple hours the SS was open the next day, they completely sold out. And they only had like four of them. Um, so my husband was like super excited that Rogue was going to be there. Because, I mean, his stuff is just insane. And so um, he, like, walks up to Rogue, and he's just like, you know, man, like, I got this mask from you. Like, I'd really love for you to sign it. And Rogue was like, nobody has ever, like, asked for me to, like, sign their stuff before. Really? And so, like, Nick was, like, one of the first ones to get, like, a signature from him. So, like, that oh, was awesome. awesome. Yeah. Um, and then just, like, seeing, like, the different teams there, because, like, you know, like, SYG was there and stuff. And they hosted the um, 4v4 tournament the next day which was really cool. They were very, like, boom, 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 like, amazing ref fan, and, like, so many giveaways, so much shit to, like, like walk away with, and yeah. even just seeing, like, the different, like, stuff that, like, is in the Airsoft community, it's just, like, mind-blowing, like, what people are coming up with. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So there was a... Uh... Yeah, so... Did you guys meet C7? There was, um, who else was there? Uh, Jammer? Yes. Jammer Actual. Um, he's, uh, he's big on, well, I, I follow him on Instagram. He's a, uh, Marine. He's a former Marine. Okay. Uh, Force Recon. Okay. He was in, uh, yes. Recon, yes. you know, Special Forces. And he's got a big, you know, following on Instagram. Probably something else, too, but I, you know, I see him on, uh, Instagram. But, uh, he was going to be there. 
And uh, yeah, there was there was a handful of people. I was like, damn, I wanted to go down to that. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you guys and got I to mean, go. me being a girl, I fell in love with Tactical Taz. You know, that little baby puppy. I was just if they were giving him away, I would have taken him in a heartbeat, you know, because, you know, he just was, like, walking around with his little vest on and his hoodie and his patches yeah. and his goggles, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, like, this is, like, the greatest thing ever. Like, all the guys are like, oh, my God, look at these guns, and I'm like, my God. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But, yeah, so. I mean, if they do another event like that definitely calm down like that yeah. shit was like insane like it was a long weekend but it was a fun weekend so we uh we've always wanted to go there because when we first started our channel the very first name we just drew out of the you know picked out of the air or whatever was uh was ss airsoft had no clue that there was an actual store named this, you know, for years before, because like I said, we just started a few years ago. So uh, we we were like, yeah, we're all excited about it. It was going to be Sharpshooter Airsoft. Yeah, SS Airsoft. So uh, we drew this logo and stuff. Uh, JP on our channel, he drew the logo. The next day, so later that night, I look up uh, like the, uh, I was going to start a website. So I look up the uh, domain. It's already there. You know, there's already a company that I was like, oh, oh, shit. Oh, we can't use that. OK. <laughs> so anyway, so there's a connection there. We've always wanted to go down there and uh, and check it out. But we never we never did. When we first started, yeah. uh, it wasn't long after cause we started our channel in 2019. And by the time I was able to get out, like start moving around, get out of the house and stuff, uh, 2020. So you know everything shut down airsoft fields especially and um yeah. so we just kind of put all that shit on hold and we forgot about it and stuff so but that is a place that we've always wanted to go yeah i mean we love ss um they're just like a great home field and like they do have like a really good like open field but then um steve the owner he's kind of like put like a little twist on speed qb he calls it steve qb um yes. And so he, like, hosts, like, little tournaments and stuff. And, um, like, my husband's team is super involved. And so like, you really see, like, the home um, teams, like, going for, like, every single tournament so they can win. Like, I think they have, like, a cash prize um, at the end of every tournament. So uh, that's really nice. So they run about, like, it's kind of like a four-month-long tournament. So it's, like, one every month. Oh, wow. um, and then at the end, it's like point based. So if you got first place um, in the first one, and then you like you kind of like build the points as you go along. So it's kind of mm -hmm. sucks because it's like if you're like coming in to play for like the fourth one, then you're not really gonna have like a chance to win anything. Um, but it it's a good incentive, you know, to make sure you're going to the tournaments and like playing hard so you can win the big prize. Right. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, we like I said, we we want to go there, and I was uh, I was torn on this last event because we really wanted to go to the mill sim. Obviously, bought tickets and all that stuff, but uh, the twelve year anniversary was looking pretty cool. Yeah, it it was insane. I mean, it was. Was that the first time you so met? So nice uh, and again, like. I... Was that the first time you met Jess? Yes, that's the first uh, okay. time I've ever met her in person. So right. uh, I was a little starstruck at first, you know, because, like, you see all these people on Instagram, and you kind of think, like, oh, like, I don't want to say, it, like, as, like, they're untouchable, I guess, because, like, you see people with, like, a large following, right. and you're like, oh, like, they're not going to talk to me, or, like, some shit like that. But, like, literally, you start talking to them, and it's like, you realize that they're people, too. Like, they yeah. want to talk about, like, their airsoft stuff. They want to talk about their personal lives and stuff. And so, like... When I right. met her, it was literally like we had like known each other for so long because I mean we're all on this group chat together on this team and it's just like yeah we're all people too we're all doing this stuff that we love together and so I mean it was just super cool meeting all these people in person because like like even with like SYG um, my husband watches them on YouTube a lot like follows them around and um, well kind of just like follows them. But, like, seeing them in person and, like, hearing, I didn't really watch them as much, but, like, my husband would be like, oh, like, 
this person, this person, this person. And then so like the names were like connecting in my head. And I was just like, oh, I watch you on my phone. Or like, I watch you on YouTube. And so yeah. it was kind of just like a little weird, I guess, you know? Um, but just seeing those big names like actually in person is like, whoa, okay. Like, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that is cool. Now, did you, uh, who started the FTW team or whatever? So my friend and I, her name is Marissa. Um, we usually met each other from significant others in the airsoft field. Um, her boyfriend at the time was on my husband's team. And so like, we like went to Nashville together one time for a tournament over there. And we kind of like just talked about like a girl's team and, just recently like a couple months ago i reached out to her and i was like hey like i really want to start a girls team like this would be like awesome and she was like ah no like we're not gonna like get anything out of that i was like okay like whatever and i was like let's just try it like let's start reaching out to the girls that we know and she was like "Mm." and so i was like fuck it like so we started adding just like people after people after people and it's just like oh if you know a girl that plays put her in this group chat like oh you know somebody's sister that plays put her in this group chat like and so we started out thinking that we were just going to be like a speedsoft team in georgia like whatever we were just going to play so originally our name was going to be big dick energy um so like these boys were going to be like oh whatever (laughs) and then like we shit on them it's just like you just got shit on by big dick energy right and so um, we, it just like blew up. So we had people from Georgia, we have people from Arizona, we have people from New Jersey, we have people from Tennessee, and it's just like, okay, like we're moving with this, like we're getting stuff going. And so it's kind of weird because like when I think about stuff, like I sometimes I feel bad like in our group chat because like I'm the one like, okay, patches, okay, shirts, okay what's our social media stuff going to be? When are we launching stuff? Like, how are we going about stuff? But I'm just like, wait a second. I have to be annoying in these group chats because I'm the one that created this. I'm the one that like started all this (laughs) shit. So it's like, I guess I'm the leader here. I got to figure out what's going on. And so, yeah, I would say it, it's been amazing, but yeah, me and Marissa are like, I guess like the founders of the team. That's cool. Now, what do you guys, uh, do you guys have a set plan yet for like a game or an event or like what, uh, what, what's next for you guys? Yeah. So we, right now, again, we're kind of just focusing, focusing more on speed stuff. Um, so we have a couple things up our sleeve right now. Um, what we're trying to work on. So definitely keep an eye out for that. I'm not going to disclose that just yet, but it's going gonna... it. to deal with (laughs) bqv um but it's very exciting very like i think it's gonna be a game changer gotcha yep well good we'll look forward to that for sure very excited now what uh do you guys you and your husband have you guys played mill sims at all or woodland games or mostly just uh indoor like qb stuff yeah mostly just indoor um I don't think I'm. We're close to um, Georgetown. They, I know they host a couple like Milsom events, I guess. Um, but we're mostly just like indoors. Um, like we're we're really trying to kind of like branch out a little bit. So I mean, if you have any recommendations for fields or anything, we're willing to travel because you know we don't have any kids or anything. So we're just like, okay, we're gonna use this time in marriage to just go out and explore. Absolutely. You know, we don't have kids. So we're going to dump our money into airsoft. (laughs) Yeah. Well, when my wife and I got married, uh, like the first month we got married, no shit. She's like, I want to have a baby. I was like, no. I was like, we we need to have time to travel, like hang out, whatever. Yeah. We're in California. We both grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. So we're in this really pretty area, you know, in California. Like, no, we're going to, and there's all kind of shit to do out there. We can go to the, where we're like 15 minutes from the beach. We were an hour away from the mountains, uh, you know, an hour or less from the desert. Like, let's go explore and have fun. So uh, we waited a little while, but uh, yeah, that, that's what it's for, you know? <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, don't, because once you have a, a baby, man, like, look. You can take them around, car trips and stuff, but I would tell you, it is so much harder. <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. Like, oh, yeah. so, 
I'm the youngest of three. So mm. I'm the baby of the family. And then my husband is the oldest of three. Gotcha. And so I think his parents are kind of more like, oh, like, when are we going to have grandbabies? And we're like, mm-hmm. like, and so my sister, she has three little girls. And it was a little rough there for a second because it was uh, three under the age of three. And so it's like we would go to my parents' house and get some free birth control over there um, yeah, with the sure. girls. And everybody's like, when are you having babies? We're like, mm-mm. Nope, nope. We're gonna go spend time playing airsoft. We're not yep. gonna pop out any babies anytime soon. So don't <laughs> hold your breath on us. That's funny. My uh, my youngest daughter, who just got married uh, a few months ago, uh, you know, we're she all she's always she's the youngest of five. So she's like, uh, nope, we're not having kids right away. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. And my wife's always like, you know, she wants more grandkids just constantly. So we have. My daughter, who was in the Air Force, she's actually out in Utah, and um, she has two kids. And then my son that lives here about 20 minutes away has two kids. So uh, so we have, you know, grandbabies, you know, some close, and then some we see on FaceTime or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, And we go out there to visit. But my wife's always telling my daughter, Caitlin, <clears throat> when are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids, you know? And she's like, Mom, stop asking me. I'm not doing it yet. <laughs> I'm yeah. not having kids yet. We want to, you know, go. they're big into going to concerts and getting tattoos right now. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, my husband and I are into playing with toy guns. Yeah. Very expensive toy guns. So yeah, it's like it is. you can strap a baby and go to a concert or some shit like that. But it's like you can't strap a baby in and go into the airsoft arena. Well, no, and if you go to a concert every, you know, two or three months, you know, 80 bucks a ticket or whatever, you know, uh, that's not a con, it's a one-time thing or maybe three times a year, but Airsoft is constant. (laughs) Like you're always upgrading, you're always putting more shit into you, supplies or whatever, you know? So yeah, it's a, that's a common theme I've heard from around the globe anyone I've talked to is once I got into airsoft, I was broke. <laughs> so it's like I was constantly feeding this hobby, you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. exactly. Cause I mean, like before I started playing, my husband would like, obviously like, spend money here and there. And I'd be like, dude, like, what are you spending your money on? Like what? You just bought a new gun. But like, I'm telling you with these high capos, it's just like, problem after problem because i mean like as soon as i got mine like i understood it was like one week it's perfectly fine one week it's shooting full auto one week it's like busting its like whole insides out and i'm just like okay now i understand why everything is so expensive right yeah you buy a 200 hundred dollar gun it's uh you're gonna have to do some work on it um, yeah. and that, you know, that was, a, that was new to me as well, because I had zero experience in airsoft. I mean, not just experience, zero knowledge of airsoft three years ago or, you know, three and a half <laughs> years ago. And, uh, and once these guys started buying these things, they're like, yeah, we got it. You know, they knew what was going on. So they're like, well, I bought this gun for whatever amount. And then, uh, I'm, I'm buying this, uh, barrel and these internals or whatever because they would ask me to work on it so but the job i had before i was paralyzed i was uh you know maintenance and that kind of thing for a lot of years so and i had a desk set up in here uh in fact where where that is right there this goes like all the way over here well on this wall i had all my tools like i had a pegboard and i had all my tools hanging up there so i could work on shit and uh because it gave me something to do so uh they would bring me guns and they're like, yeah, it's a brand new gun. I just bought the, I'm like, why are you buying new shit for a new gun? What are you doing? So they're like, no, we have to like, I was like, why? Like, what's wrong with these things? So we go out there and test them. And I just didn't know, you know, I was, I was ignorant to all that. And I was like, yeah. why is it? And I honestly, I still have this question to this day. Why is it that airsofters are so, accepting of shit gear or you know guns right out of the box like i don't i don't get it don't they offer a gun that just shoots like you know good 
for yeah. at least six months. <laughs> so exactly. Exactly. Uh, I don't know, but I, you know, we had some flukes. We had some flukes. We had a, uh, a Lancer tactical, two of them actually M4s. We got in mystery boxes. Cause when we started a channel, we did uh, unboxings. So, okay. cause these guys, I was trying to get them to do like gameplay stuff. It was very difficult for that. They didn't want to, you know, do all the gameplay and the GoPro footage. And mm, so, yeah, we did we did a few of them but uh mostly unboxings and then we would review the uh, guns that we got in those boxes but mm -hmm. so we got two lancer tacticals that were just like i mean awesome like perfect hop up perfect shooting consistent never broke and it's that's three years ago and they're still shooting great it's so yeah. weird and these are like yeah. 90 dollar guns <laughs> It's exactly. so odd, you know, but anyway, and then my son bought <laughs> yeah. a, you know, a, a Chris Vector for 500 bucks and the thing was a piece of shit. Now, normally they're not, normally they're not, but you know, that was the one fluke we got that <laughs> was the bad one. Yeah, exactly. Like I have, um, my, I don't want to say it wrong. The Tokyo, is it the Tokyo Mar Mari? Mari? I'm just going to say Marie. TM because I yeah. don't want to fuck that up. Um, so I have the TM and I, my husband like put an orange, um, slide on there for me cause I wanted it to be spooky. And so I just remember one day I was out at power ops and I was like, why is my gun working? Like why is it shooting? And I looked down and it's just like, springs are falling out. All this shit is just falling out. And I was like, Oh my oh, God, not good. And so like, I'm trying to like, kind of like piece it back together. And Nick comes flying around the corner, and he's like, what's wrong? And I was just like, my gun's broke. And he's just like, oh, let me try to fix it. And I, like, hold it up, and I turn it over, and everything just kind of, like, flies out. And he's like, oh, yeah, oh you gotta God. go. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And then, um, so, like, we get it all fixed and everything, and then we, like, go to SS one day, and all of a sudden, my gun starts shooting full auto. And he's like, what the fuck is going on with that? Because he could, he, like, my gun is pretty loud. Like, you can yeah. hear the high capless. And right. so I'm like, he usually can hear where I'm at. And he hears my gun going full auto. And obviously, like, these little kids are like, you can't go full auto. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> fucking trying to do this shit. And so oh, shit. I'm, like, running out of there. And everybody's like, you got to fix this. You got to fix this. You got to fix this. And I'm like, okay, fix the problem. But... Please tell me what the actual problem is because, you know, like, okay, we're going to dump money on this and then that doesn't work. And you dump money on this and then that doesn't work. So it's just like hit or miss. But I agree with you. These guns are stupid expensive and they get crapped on real easy. And you, the maintenance is like yeah. insane. You can buy a, uh, like a off brand or even a, a normal brand, uh, Maybe a Smith and Wesson. I think the Smith and Wesson Shield nine millimeter real steel gun is like mm -hmm. two hundred and eighty nine bucks right now. Okay, at one of the shops here, the Palmetto State Armory, and um, that thing will shoot for fucking ten years probably or more, maybe forever. You know, yeah. flawlessly if you if you keep it clean and have good ammo, like it's gonna work. But airsoft is like, okay, yeah. Well, it was only, a, they would always tell me, you know, when it break, oh, it was only a $250 gun. I'm like, only? Hey. I'm like, bro, what the that's, fuck? I don't get yeah. it. <laughs> so, that's three weeks worth of grocery bills. Uh, I just, I don't understand. But uh, now I understand custom work if you want to put in, you know, money into that kind of thing. But the, the upkeep, upkeep and upgrades of just the basic guns, uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like, man there's got to be a better standard mm -hmm. and uh you know yeah. with that kind of with, with all that shit but uh, yeah i mean so but like when my husband he played a little bit um of air stuff like growing up and so he had like a bunch of different guns and i i think back then they obviously didn't do like the high cap of stuff and yeah. so um he had like a firehawk and a rifle or a different rifle and he ended up selling it, so he like he was like, I'm not gonna use it, like I'm just gonna sell it to somebody else. And it was just like a family friend that he sold it to. And so when he got out of the Marines, 
it, he only got back into airsoft because our next door neighbors like were taking their airsoft stuff outside and he's like oh, i forgot about this i can yeah. play this on the weekends when you're at work and i was like okay whatever <laughs> and so when we started playing speed i was a back player and we didn't have like a rifle that i was using and he was like i'm gonna text this person and see if they still have the firehawk and he was like yeah 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 that's a good idea and so he texts them and obviously i think like the firehawk could be like a hundred to two hundred dollar rifle and he ended up getting it for like 50 bucks back from this person I fixed up the battery shoot perfectly it was loud as fuck people knew the fuck like where the fuck i was on this like field <laughs> right and it, it was amazing and so he's like oh we should put a polar star in it and i was like that's a lot of money ended up spending like 300 dollars more to fix up this gun and it is like the most perfect gun like it beautiful absolutely yeah. beautiful but i, I mean that's the answer is uh hpa yes yep. yes yeah, you have to go HPA. I mean, I a lot of people like hate on it, but I'm just like, I mean, you can't go wrong. With it. Well, I think they only hate on it because all the negative or most of the negative videos, probably all of them, uh, on YouTube, if you search airsoft, whatever, is uh, is the rager videos. You know, the young kids, whatever. It's they're always HPA and yeah. full auto. That's you know. 40 rounds a second, like blasting the shit out of people at 10 feet away because they're pissed off. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably, I would imagine that's the only negative that, you know, but as far as the guns, like working, that's yeah. like the best shit ever because the gearboxes, most gearboxes are shit. The only um, crap part about it is when we do want to go full auto with that shit and it's just like it just eats my air so like oh yeah i do one mag and it's just like oh my air is out like you're <laughs> like like full auto and it's just like yeah you know, so oh yeah that's the only bad part about it you know i watch these videos and uh all these different channels whatever you know, i'll watch a uh like gameplay videos and then you just like hpa 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 you, you know and I feel like when I'm watching those videos, I'm paying attention, the audio and the, and the visual. I'm I'm looking at what they're shooting, who they're shooting, whatever. Or I guess the sniper videos, you know, uh, those are spraying or whatever. But uh, and then I watch somebody has a GoPro that's using a uh, you know an AEG, and it's like I'm like. All I'm all I'm hearing, like the whole, I can't hear, I can't even pay attention to the video because I hear this, you know, this winding gearbox. It's so fucking annoying. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize that when we first started using these guns because I wasn't around HPA very much, you know. But I always uh, wondered why HPA wasn't the standard in airsoft mm -hmm. from paintball yeah. because that's what paintball is. Paintball is all just air, you know. Yeah. No yeah. Gears. yeah, I mean, I completely agree. It has been really nice talking with you. Yes, it's been very nice talking with you. We should do it again sometime. Maybe sure. get some more girls out here. But As, anything else? No, we're good. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't have a plan when I start these, these <laughs> videos. I really don't. I, uh, I, I'll i tell you what I do. I look at whoever I message, right? Mm -hmm. I look at your social media, whatever. You know, if you have something... You know, some people have like a YouTube channel, yeah, uh, link or whatever in their bio if they start a YouTube channel, or whatever. Uh, I look at their Instagram, I look at their YouTube. Um, sometimes, like if they have a uh, LinkedIn or something, I'll look at that. Now, if I wasn't researching for a podcast, it would be considered stalking, but it's not okay research, it's, research. <laughs> it's not it's not stalking i promise <laughs> so i'm really just trying to like have something to talk about you know i want to know yeah. i don't want to sit here like this if i looked at one picture or one post on your instagram and said hey you want to do a podcast and i never looked at anything else and i start here like how many quest like dude what am i going to ask i don't even know <laughs> You know, like, what's your name? Where do you uh, live? How did you get into airsoft? That's mm -hmm. okay. That's one part of the story, you know? Yeah. So, uh, anyway, but I, I don't plan these. I'm very, you know, just kind of, 
hey, if I, I pretend, honestly, this is exactly how I talk to you. If you and your husband came over for one of our big parties, uh, cookouts or whatever, uh, and we were standing on the back deck drinking, and I'd be like, hey, what's going on, you know? Hey, I'm Eric, you know? Uh, yeah. So where, oh, you guys are in Georgia? Did you grow up there? You know, that's that's the conversation. And whatever you say, it just goes from there. I just, I love meeting people in real life. That's yeah. what I, that's the way I talk to them. And I do that on here as well. So it's just, uh, but yeah, I don't have a, a format and I don't have anything prepped. So the only, my only prep is this. So this is my new uh, healthy uh, herbal drink. Okay. It's herbal. All right. It's got barley and hops in it. And yeah. um, <laughs> so that's it. Uh, and then I <clears throat> start the video and say, hey, what's up? I mean, it's, again, it's better than just like, oh, what's your name? What do you run? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Because then it's just the same fucking shit over and over again. Yeah, I don't... I, I can't talk to people that way. It's weird. You know? Yeah, yeah. Hey, welcome to the podcast. What's going on? You know? Like a radio talk show or some shit? I'm like, no. And then, like, I'm just going to be myself, okay? Yeah, uh, yeah. This is it. And when I go at, and I edit my own videos, so I'm always like, <sighs> I sound like... <laughs> I, you know, when you watch your own video, you know how it is because you've watched some of your own reels. When you first started doing that, you're like, oh, I don't like the way I sound or I, don't, I shouldn't have said this or whatever, you know? Yeah. And I was like, you have to get to that point where you're like, fuck it. This is just me or you know, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I am kind of like self-conscious like when I talk because you probably know I hop around a lot. And so it's just like, too. I, I'm like. Oh, this happened, but then this happened, and then this happened, and then, and then it's like, okay, let's reel this back into what we're actually talking about. Yeah. So hopefully it's a little bit entertaining, but hopefully oh, we can I had draw a great time. people to talk. <laughs> Look, it, you know what? When we post this, well, when I first started these, I told people there's a lot of people that would, you know, this is their first time doing a podcast, and they were very uh, hesitant, and they're like, I don't know. And I would say, you know what? These are not live, these are recorded. Let's do it. And if uh, at the end of it, if, you know, we, we get ready to say bye and you're like, I don't really like it. I'll say, fuck it. I'll scrap that shit. Okay. And when you're ready in another, whenever, you know, if you want to do it again, we'll do it again. If you want to be more prepared or whatever, we can just throw it out. I don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, you know, why I, you don't think I sound stupid, you know, <laughs> whatever. It's entertaining. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I I think you were great. Thank you. I think you were great. I uh, appreciate that. So <laughs> I, I haven't had a bad podcast yet. Uh, okay. Not, I mean, not saying that I'm good at it. I'm saying that I've never met someone that's bad at just having a conversation, you know? Yeah. I mean, I like this because it's kind of like a FaceTime, you know? Like, it's, it's not live. Not looking at people's comments, telling them that we're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when I was growing up, I had to accept that a long time ago. I just had to be like, okay, that's just part of it, whatever, you know, just get over that right away. <laughs> so, yeah. oh yeah. And then my daughter, she came over yesterday, my youngest daughter that just got married. She's a hairstylist, hair nails thing, whatever. So she comes over yesterday, cut my hair, and uh, she says, I got this new foil shaver, clippers or some shit, I don't know. So I'm like, well, what the hell's that? She's like, oh, it's like, it really, it just looks like an electric, you know, a cordless electric razor that's really wide. So she's like, you want me to try it on you? And uh, I was like, yeah, go ahead. So, she, man, she went crazy. She went, like, cut all this shit, which is fine because this shit grows back so fast. So she cut all this off. I usually have something here. She's using it everywhere, bro. It was like cutting my, you know, everything. I was like, uh, okay, like, mm -hmm. that's fine. It was cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you knew yeah, you think you okay. I was like, well, uh, and then I got a bunch of sun today because I was out uh, painting outside. Okay. You know, I do construction. I usually do, like, drywall and all the sh shit inside. But um, And it's been nice lately. So I was doing all this trim on the outside of the house. So uh, my face is getting red. and I mean, I love getting out in the sun. But, 
you know, when I get on camera, I'm like, Jesus, it looks like it's 100 degrees in here or something. Right, right. Oh, I mean, yeah. Nick and I just got back from the beach. It's like, is it look really tan or a little yeah. burnt? No, you, you look good. Where uh, where'd you guys go? Myrtle? We went to Destin, Florida. Oh, wow. That's nice. Yeah. It was yeah. nice because, I mean, it's like a six-hour drive, so we were there for our anniversary. So. Oh, cool. Which one? Which anniversary? Uh, two. Yeah. You're not two of being married. Sorry, my AirPods just died, so the oh, audio cool. suck up a little bit. No, it's fine. It sounds fine. It just, uh, it's a little echoey. Okay. It's, it's not, not bad. You're, it's not echoey now. Okay. So, you're good. Perfect. Well, mm -hmm. we're about to wrap up anyway, because... I've been drinking the whole time we're talking. I gotta take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go cook so, dinner. Okay, good. Well, you guys eat um, late, huh? Yeah, you know, business comes first. <laughs> I hear ya. They eat on my time. Yes, for sure. Well, thank you again for being on yes. here. And uh, we'll do it again in the future. Maybe have uh, Nick on here as well. Yes, he would love that. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Thanks again. Um, and uh, thank I'll you. post all your social stuff in here okay uh, well you have to send me a link to your tiktok and i'll yeah. post that as well because i don't i don't you know have that but uh and i can add that too okay perfect awesome. thanks well, alexis thank you so much i hope you have a good night you too